Hello, my Actic here. This is going to be a bit of a different type of video. We're going to try it out, and uh, yeah, I think if this goes well, I might actually be able to show you guys what I end up doing with this system right here. This is a much older machine. I've got tons of parts. It's really a pet project of mine uh, to run DOS on this and be able to play some older games. I've got Sound Blaster cards and stuff, uh, all kinds of things. So if this does go well, then uh, expect to see some more uh, computer stuff in the future, and uh, hopefully I'll get a better camera someday. But that's not what I want to talk to you about today. Today we're going to be working on this. This is a shitty computer, I guess. Uh, what is it, actually? An HP Compaq 6000 Pro Micro Tower. I uh, had this built up at one point and lent it to a friend to use as a low-end gaming computer until they could get something a little fancier and uh, some of the parts have been stripped out since then so I don't think this is in functioning condition at all so we're going to be taking this video and getting this running a 750 Ti I believe it's a Ti 750Ti, uh, it'll have whatever processor is in there right now in it still, uh, stock cooling, and uh, see if we can't get this running reasonably well. Start with the basics before we get into anything crazy. Oh, that noise sounded pleasant. Uh, is this the side that comes off? No, of course not. Yeah, something's rattling around in here. Alright, let's lift the veil and see what uh, is inside oh my that's not that's not great so here's our here's our CPU fan uh, USBs it must ah they have fallen off the front they used to go up here it looks like um, so we're gonna have to get those reattached got this is like stuck to the RAM. Hard drive based stuff probably for like uh, easy slide in and out and that's probably also what this piece is for. So we don't need those. I've got a loose SATA cable here. It doesn't appear that the CPU heatsink has ever been removed. Um, so I imagine we're probably okay to just use that as is. Everything is fucking unplugged in here. What did he do to it? What's life if not living a little dangerously? I'm gonna put the graphics card in here uh, now because then I can see if our um, CPU fan will fit in with this card installed which is going to be pretty scary. Hopefully it fits. Holy shit, hopefully this card will go in. Oh, there we go. Lock that in place. Okay, graphics card is installed. I really don't even know how the fuck this went in there. Couldn't have been like that. And it seems like that wire is in the way, so it couldn't have been like that. It had to have been like this. But then the wire doesn't reach. That doesn't seem right. Oh, hey, there we go. Okay, we got that installed. So let's feed this through the front. And set that there, I guess. They must not go in there, so let's take them out and just pull it over. And here's the first one. So I've got yellow, green, and blue all installed up to our USB ports on the front and audio jack. Now let's see if we just slap this over the front of it and that's how it installs, hopefully. 
Oh. That goes down in there, doesn't it? Oh no, that one does go over. Weird. It seems firmly in place. Okay, so we actually did manage to fix our uh, front USB ports. Let's go ahead and uh, boot this, shall we? I'll connect her up to a monitor and see what it does. Okay, we've got it plugged into power. I have a VGA going to my third monitor here, and uh, I unplugged all the other ports that are on it right now so that I'd be able to just have the one display uh, pop up for this. Otherwise, the monitor is kind of annoying to get to switch inputs. So let's go ahead and hit the power button and see what we get. Wait, where's the power button? Found it. That didn't sound good. Okay, so that didn't work well. Uh, five beeps after Googling it seems to be a memory or motherboard problem, which is just fan-fucking-tastic. So I'm gonna have to check all these memory sticks individually and see if uh, we can identify which one's bad, and if nothing comes of any of it, then uh, we just have to assume that this board is dead and there's nothing I can do for this one. And if that is the case, I have two, three, four, five, six other computers that I could uh, potentially work on. <laughs> so, yeah, let's uh, go ahead with the memory testing and see if we can't get this uh, to start up. Hey! We actually got post! Memory size error, yeah, it's just upset that the uh, actual amount of memory changed. Boy, that's precarious. Okay, that'll work. Um, so that's not a problem. I don't actually have a keyboard plugged into this, so we're just going to tell it to F off and unplug it, I guess. Because there's not much else I can do, so we're going to do that quick and then try putting more memory in it. Alright, so we've got a second stick installed. Uh, we're going to try it with two sticks of memory. I didn't even bother to check how much RAM it actually is. It's probably two gigs. Total. Yep, two gigabytes. Okay. And then again, the memory has changed again, so now, it, uh, now it's well aware of that. Now for shits and giggles, since it seems I got pretty lucky on this, Let's try the final stick of RAM, which should bring this computer up to... Oh wow, this is a 4 gig stick, so that would bring this up to 6 gigabytes. So, let's just see if it works now. Installed, and let's see what she does. Oh, no way. It actually worked. Look at that. Alright, we've made progress. Um, now, I don't think you can actually plug a PS2 keyboard in hot swap style. So, I'm gonna probably have to restart the machine for it to register this keyboard here. Oh, no, maybe not. Let's try it. Hey, it did work. Alright, let's go through the BIOS here and see what we've got. Uh, set up. Our processor is... 2.8 gigahertz. It's a quad core. I think that's actually not bad at all. That's not too shabby. Um, we've got six gigs of RAM. Everything seems to be reading properly. Awesome. Ten, three. It has the correct time and date. Awesome. We're not flashing shit. Uh, I have no hard drives installed at the moment. So let's go ahead, save changes, and exit and get a hard drive put in this thing. Then we can start figuring out what operating system we're gonna use. All right, so I've decided we're going to install this 42 megabyte Mitsubishi um, hard drive. It's got um, Molex power. We can do that, but um, I'm not so sure about those. Okay, bad idea. 
instead maybe let's go with something a little more modern a 200 gigabyte SATA ATA hard drive from Western Digital. This appears to actually be a Western Digital Black maybe? Which if that's the case then hey it should work. Okay we're back to booting and let's see if this drive works shall we? I don't expect anything to actually boot off of this thing, but as long as it realizes there's a drive here, that's what we're looking for. Okay, that's not a great sign. Um, I have SATA power connected to it. Does the drive feel like it's spinning at all? I don't feel the drive spinning at all. Ah! Don't mind me, just breaking things. Okay, let's grab a different hard drive and see if we can get something working here. Okay, so here's the good news. I found some hard drives. Here's the bad news. Ugh, they're all IDE. Well, yeah, no. I don't think any one of them aren't. This one actually might not be. What is this one? Nope. It was backwards. It's IDE. So, I don't have an IDE compatible motherboard here, which means that uh, this is going to be a mild problem. Okay, this is going to be a little weird, but I do have this SATA laptop hard drive that's 750 gigabytes. Um, maybe this will work. I have my doubts, but let's give it a go because I really don't know what else we can really try with this guy. It's seeming like it's just dead, which really is a bummer because I have no idea what would have been on this hard drive. So out with that. Let's try this guy out. Again, we'll use the first power connector on there, and SATA cable follows suit. Let's see if we get some drive spin on this one, shall we? I might actually. Yeah! <gasps> we got it! It's detected 750 gigabytes. Save changes. That is the jankiest setup, but it works. Let's see if this boots by any chance. Okay. I don't think it's going to be able to actually boot from this. Um, the computer's not locked up. I can still hit numlock, and it uh, actually lights up on the keyboard properly. So, it's not frozen frozen. It's just thinking really hard about it. Okay, so that didn't get anywhere. We're going to put a CD drive into this and just install our own operating system. So I got that. But uh, what OS do we choose? Uh, we've got Ubuntu. I have Ubuntu 18.04 and 14.04.2. I say we try out Ubuntu. That'll be a fun one. Okay, our CD drive isn't going to be a permanent installment on this guy. So let's just... Uh, slap her on and first let's try Ubuntu 1404. I wonder if anything's actually in this disk drive. Oh, first it needs to be happy about oh, wow. Windows 10. <laughs> okay, I told it that the disk drive is good. Here's my Windows 10 1511 <laughs> install disk. I was actually fucking looking for that. That's my favorite version of Windows 10. That's what I'm running right now. Alright, let's pop in. Uh, and we're probably going to have to restart because it looks like it missed the boot from CD-ROM portion. So I'm just going to turn it off and back on. That's way too many errors. <laughs> Is it still working? Like, everything on that first uh, page was just errors. 
the nice thing about installing Linux here is we can actually use it to browse that 750 gigabyte hard drive and see if there's any data that I need to collect off of it, like perhaps old photos or something. We got a cursor. We got gray. Probably you want to. First, I want to see if we can browse that hard drive at all. Those are probably uh, like computer restore volumes, though. So I doubt we'll get any interesting data off of them. Wait, what? It has Steam OS on it? Yo! If we install it alongside that, we may be able to get that to boot properly because Ubuntu's installations should add Grub back on. Oh, the screen went black. Is it installing? Okay, the screen is completely black. The monitor is asleep. And the machine still says it's thinking. And the hard drive light, or the, um,. Uh, CD-ROM light is blinking intermittently. Seems to have stopped for now. But to be truthful to you, I don't know what it's doing. Has it maybe just gone... Oh. <laughs> it did a screensaver while it was installing. Didn't expect that. There we go. Alright, so we did in fact actually get our Steam OS option in Grub as I suspected, so let's actually try booting that. Because this appears to be what was installed prior on this hard drive. And if this turned into a Steam OS machine, I would not be mad about that. Get it hooked up to the internet and be able to put this wherever the hell I want and play my games remotely. Okay. It seems broken. My caps lock and scroll lock are blinking. I think that means it's broken. So we're gonna have to install SteamOS um, separately. So let's just make sure that uh, regular Ubuntu boots properly now. And then from within there, I can delete the partition and install SteamOS. And I'll probably do all that in another video. Um, like I said, guys, if you think that this is something you would like to see more of from me, then please let me know. Leave a like or something. Drop down in the comments. Whatever you gotta do. And uh, once I get enough parts for my little project AT computer, uh, I could do a video on that. Should all go well. And there it is. The computer is completely functioning. It's got a 750 Ti in it now, so that's pretty fucking neat. I would say, all in all, this has gone pretty well. Alrighty. And until next time, farewell.